This country, under this APC regime, came to become the poverty capital of the world. It became the place where the minimum wage became the miserable wage for workers. But if you think about Nigeria itself, uh, it's an open prison. What are the things you think we're not getting right? I don't think there are things we are not getting right. Everything is wrong in Nigeria today. Team to Adami Mugo 105.1 FM Ibado. And let me say a very good morning, although it is still uh, 11.08 a.m. right here in the studios of Adami Mugo 105.1 FM Ibado. And let me welcome you on board at this uh, special session. I love uh, to call it, of course, it's a big fish in the studios of uh your dad the voice of the light and listeners uh, joins us southwest nigeria and beyond Diomi Jobi is my name let me start on that note and it feels good uh, to welcome you on board although i'm standing in for joshua adegbite if you've been following us on social media we posted uh, something yesterday about uh the interview we should have had yesterday with uh, a big fish in the political arena in nigeria is somebody that you know is an activist and of course uh, a vibrant uh, personality when you talk anything politics in nigeria well i'll leave a big joshua to do the introduction in proper but he's a man that uh, you know personally i've been following a writer from my undergraduate days you know he's marked uh, everywhere and of course as somebody you know i'm talking about uh, the aac presidential candidate in the last uh, general elections or more uh, of course he's in the east in the studios uh, this uh, morning and uh, you know what i'm standing in for joshua uh, David Tay, I would just uh, like uh, to do uh, something before Big Joshua takes up uh, the big issue of the day. A uh, very good morning, it is to you, sir. Are you doing? And of course, I must say, good, you know, having you in the studio of Adam Mugo this uh, morning. It's uh, nice to be here. Uh, good morning, and uh, well, I don't know to, what I to say. Happy Sunday, yeah, of course. It, it's it's yeah. happy Sunday. Nigerians are barely happy. Days, so. <laughs> well. All this way. So, sir, let me just uh, start on this uh, note. You know, this is just like uh, a big opportunity uh, for me to just uh, talk uh, the uh, pre-independence, uh, you know, preparations. You know, a lot of uh, things uh, have been said. I'm very sure you're also aware of uh, the ministerial briefing that we had uh, recently. It should be on Thursday where we had uh, the Minister of Information as well as uh, other cabinet uh, members of uh, President Bola Tinubu coming out to talk about uh, the president's achievements in uh, you know less than two years. And as we prepare for yet another... Did it, did you said achievement? Yeah, they said. That's what I said. They said, you know. And as we prepare for the 64th, uh, you know, uh, dependence and anniversary of Nigeria and as a stakeholder you've seen a lot especially in the past uh, one year like you mentioned Nigerians are barely happy what are the things you think we're not getting right as we prepare for yet another time for Nigerians to tell their story as far as the dependence is concerned I don't think there are things we are not getting right everything is wrong in Nigeria today and uh, <coughs> we got it wrong uh, as we now know from the beginning yeah. from the beginning of uh, even the creation of Nigeria which was the year 1900 or so when Nigeria was created as a business by our colonial masters and it never became a nation and then we got independence from them in 1960 few years later, there was a lot of political crisis that uh, happened, and it started right here in Ibadan, or your state. And that consumed Nigeria and led to a civil war uh, that uh, raged on from 1967 to about 1970. And ever since then, um, we never got it right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we've tried tried but our biggest problem of course is what uh general shebe will refer to as leadership huh. yes we never got it right on that note okay. and that's why we are where we are today celebrating an independence that 
don't really matter to the Nigerian people. I don't. I've not met anybody since last since I arrived in Nigeria who is looking forward to celebrating an Independence Day of '64, except of course those who are in mm -hmm. government and in power. Those who are empowered by power. Those are the only people talking about this. And even at their own level, they have said that they don't want to celebrate openly. That's yeah, going it's be, going to be a, a low-key event. It's going to be a low-key event because they know that there's nothing to celebrate. Okay. And, uh, you know, before I actually ask you another question, I'll just uh, like uh, to quickly do this. In case you're just uh, joining us, uh, this is a special session with uh, the presidential candidate of uh, AAC, you know, uh, Omo Yele Shogure. And he's in the studios, uh, you know, of Adami Mogo 105.1 FM. And uh, we're waiting, Joshua Adebite, because uh, this is a special day and you need a big man, of course, uh, to just uh, take on the big fish in the studios and uh, we are live on Facebook at Dami Mogu 105 or the 20 FM and when Joshua comes of course I uh, will start the whole interview uh, in proper and uh, we'll be speaking about the um, you know, upcoming uh, independence uh, 64th independence anniversary of course the one that will happen on October 1st and uh, let's just uh, move away from that now and uh, let's uh, talk one of the major issues of the moment of course I uh, will know that will surely be the uh, do elections uh, the other elections, you would say, you know, has come and gone, but the dust it raised, it's yet uh, to generate. So, uh, maybe in less than uh, uh, like one minute before Joshua takes over, we find that, uh, you know, uh, some CSOs are coming out uh, to uh, berate uh, the credibility of that election. And recently, the All Progressives of Congress uh, came out with a statement attacking, I won't really say attacking, but something like that, Yaga Africa's uh, report about that election. The, the Super League saying this guy is well known uh, to be a fantastic sportscaster, but of course he did his best, he did his beat uh, holding uh, the fort uh, for me while I was away, it was actually a game today, we I mean, I should have been in the studio yesterday and I ensured that uh, I tried to also tie him down. <laughs> Uh, was on the neck of a comrade and said, uh, I was right in the studio, of course, <laughs> you are here now, yes. and it's good to have you here. Thank you very uh, much. We sincerely appreciate you coming around here this morning. Uh, so, let's quickly start this way. You talked about, let me pick it up from where I left it off. Yes. Uh, you talked about a uh, door selection. I'm yes. coming to you. When are we ever going to have an election in Nigeria? Well, we are not going to have not just an election, we can't have anything right doing the same thing all over again, the same way and expecting a different result. And we have seen it all. I've participated in two elections. Of course, yeah. And I can tell you categorically that Nigeria's leadership is elite. Political elite has reached a point where they do not hold election anymore. And it doesn't matter where which level the election is. In fact, the state electoral commissions are even the worst. The state electoral the CX across yes, Nigeria. They are the worst. <laughs> this ones they don't even pretend. I make state pretends to hold elections. Mm. Uh, but it, it, you know, of course these things are predetermined. And I I was on a radio show in the state, Akura. I think I monitored it. The of the election, and I was okay, telling the election, yeah. yes, of the, of the day before. Mm. And I said, Look, these guys have made up their mind. The next morning, the day of the, the day they were announcing the election result, someone was saying, Oh, it looks like PDP is going to win. <laughs> I said, If it is what I know, mm. they have already talked about, you know, they always give room for people to speculate. Mm. They give but, hope. Yes, they <laughs> give hope. hope, you know, <laughs> and it is. By noon, that the person realized that I was right. They already, you know, and if you, there's, there's something characteristic about the other election, mm. which will determine the next off season election, which is in the Ondo State, my state. Yes. The majority of the Ondo State people who are going to win the Ondo State election mm. went to Ondo State mm. to perfect how they will win the Ondo State election. There's, 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 there's various components to rigging an election. Okay. Yes. And one of it is INEC itself. Mm -hmm. But it also means, you know, the police, security agencies, all of them are in on it. Mm -hmm. 
NNS movement of money. In fact, the money that was used for the election by the APC was flown into Ondo State and then driven by land hmm. to Ondo State. It was flown into Akura Airport because I was there. When uh, I was because I was going to ask you how you how you got to know all of this. Yes, because the money we know the biggest election funding scandal. Hmm. Well, I'm not, I would say that's the biggest election money, but the biggest state election fund this calendar. Mm. I was the one that unraveled it, and it was a kitty election when Fire Shea was running. And mm -hmm. Obaniko okay. flew money. The case is in court now. Okay. Uh -huh. To a uh, Korea, I think, mm. and then the, and the, the amount was staggering. I mean, like they fill an aircraft with cash. With cash. A fluid to make it a state to rig election for fire share at that time. Okay, we'll come back to election matters. Let me ask you uh, one of the questions that I believe that majority of Nigerians, uh, <coughs> people who are listening to us right now, we have on their mind. And uh, I want to talk about you uh, briefly. I want to talk about you briefly. Many people view you through different lenses. Uh, some see you as a voice of opposition, others as a passionate activist, uh, while some might label you as a rabble rouser uh, or even a controversial figure, a controversial uh, journalist. Uh, but I would like to ask you, I want you to set the record straight. How do you uh, perceive yourself amidst uh, these uh, varied uh, interpretations? Who is Omo Yalisho Wore? 209 Nigerian. I want to today. answer this with a Yoruba proverb. Mm. But I will describe it in English. Okay. And they said, if you gather a bunch of blind people mm. to touch an elephant. Touch an elephant, yes, and I think I know that proverb. They will <laughs> tell you, depending mm. on where they touch, it depends. Or what animal mm -hmm. thing it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we will touch some side and say it's a porcupine. Mm -hmm. Some will touch it say uh, it's a grass cutter. Some will <laughs> touch it and say it's, you know, just uh, a lion. So the reason I say so is because. It is also part of what I exist for. Okay. For people to have the right to perceive me as they like. Hmm. What I don't do is put myself in a box. In fact, I hate labels. Hmm. I don't want to, so I don't have any record to set straight. Mm -hmm. So that means I'll accept. I'll be trying to explain who I am. Hmm. I mean, a person who has evolved over almost 40 years. Because I don't think it's that much time. explanation. So, you know, people are entitled to 